Urology FB viewers, good evening, one and all. Uh, today, uh, topic is a radical cystectomy by robotic technology, laparoscopically. As you all know, the carcinoma bladder incidence has risen. The one of the main modality of the treatment after TURBT is uh, radical cystectomy, and this radical cystectomy quite a long time open surgery has stayed uh, very good. Uh, uh, stand. But as the time goes on, uh, laparoscopically also, entire European world and uh, Western world have moved and a lot of publications are there. There are so many techniques of uh, radical cystectomy. After that, uh, uh, extra, I mean, after that peritoneum, the ab abdominal opening, small incision, and then making either neobladder or conduit. Slowly, that also shifted to the intracorporeal suturing. The main reason being not only the small incision, but the, when the bowel comes out, the paralytic ileus increases. Now, the staplers have come, ureteric anastomosis has become uh, popular. So, slowly moving to intracorporeal, uh, the not only conduits, but the neobladder also, a lot of people are demonstrating. With that uh, uh, introduction, today our speaker is Dr. Sachin. I will introduce him officially and then and we will go there. So today topic is robotic assisted radical cystectomy with intracarpolar urinary diversion. Technical concentration challenging cases by Dr. Sachin Arakare Nataraj. He is from Bangalore. So he is HOD and lead urology urology, oncology, robotic surgery, and renal transplantation in Astor Whitefield Hospital, Bangalore. And uh, probably this is one of the new hospitals. Robotic surgical training and observership at Henry Ford Hospital, Detroit, USA. Robotic fellowship in urology, oncology, and renal transplantation, Vatikuti Institute. AUA USA Travel Fellowship 2014. And AUA 2020 Annual Meeting Best Video. That's great. First prize in managing a urological complication in North Zone, USA 2020. Second prize in AUA resident ball in uh, Orlando 2014. Specialization and expertise bladder cancer, kidney cancer, prostate cancer, penile and testicular cancers. More than 30 peer reviewed publications in indexed journals. More than 40 presentations in national and international conferences. Peer reviewer of IJU, British Medical Journal, BJUI, and Asian U. Journal of Urology. Definitely his uh, career is MS and uh, MRCS and MCH SGPJ Lucknow. So there is nothing to speak about his academic career other than this, purely academic. Sachin, thank you for joining. Uh, this is the uh, dream surgery after the radical prostatectomy uh, because uh, the uh, Technically, it is actually more time taking, more challenging, a lot of movements, a lot of uh, camera movements will be there. So let's listen from you. Thank you once again for joining. Over to you. Thank you very much, sir. So it's an honor and privilege to be presenting in Preeti Virological, uh, live virological program. So radical cystectomy involves a lot of steps. So it's not like a partial or prostatectomy where we have fixed steps. It has a lot of steps. Not only involves the operating surgeons, it involves the assistants, the anesthetist, the bedside assistants, nursing. So all these people coordinate and do it. So everybody should be in sync when we are doing this. Not only this, the prehabilitation, the post-op aspect where you involve uh, ERAS protocol, stoma care physicians, physician assistants, all these people should be in sync with you when you're doing radical cystectomy. It's not only the surgery, the pre-op and post-op is equally important as surgery. So I'll be sharing my screen. Yes. Sir. Yeah, visible and uh, full screen, yes. So I'll be presenting about radical cystectomy. So radical cystectomy as such can be done laparoscopically. So there is nothing great in doing robotically. 
The other part is the intracorporeal urinary diversion, whether it is an ileal conduit diversion or the neobladder. So, which involves a lot of intracorporeal suturing, anastomosis. It's technically challenging to do laparoscopically. So, here, here comes the robotic approach. So, many studies have been done comparing uh, radical cystectomy with open radical cystectomies like razor tile and recently JAMA also. There was a study comparing ro robotic cystectomy to open radical cystectomy, which showed robotic cystectomy is non inferior to open cystectomy. But however, all the studies didn't say that intracorporeal diversion is better than diversion when we when you do extracorporeal diversion. So still now, one we, we know that radical robotic radical cystectomy is non-inferior to open radical cystectomy, but how somehow we have to prove that intracorporeal urinary diversion is non-inferior or even superior to extracorporeal urinary diversion. I am not going to talk about that, but I am going to talk about this technical aspects of intracorporeal urinary diversions and some other challenging cases which I have encountered. So I don't nothing to disclose. So the outline of this talk will be I'll be talking about robotic radical cystectomy, intracorporeal ileal conduit, intracorporeal neobladder, and the challenging scenarios. Uh, it's very important to have proper patient selection and proper preoperative planning. So we should choose patient wisely when we are choosing ileal conduit versus neobladder. So ideally, I will choose neobladder with patient with probably low BMI, young patient who is compliant to do CIC, who has a good GFR, compared to an ileal conduit who might be obese, who will not be able to do uh, CIC, who is not uh, compliant with, uh, I'll do an ileal conduit. So all patients should have adequate nutrition. They should have good uh, albumin level pre-surgery. And pre-surgery, I don't use any mechanical blood preparation. Single dose of prophylactic antibiotic is given. We also give DVT prophylaxis. Also give pro carbohydrate preloading. So we get something called pre carb which can be given up two hours before the surgery and we follow the protocol. So this is the port placement. So the main port is the camera port, which is usually placed about three to four finger beds above the umbilicus. So it's a 12 mm camera port if you are using an SI robot or an 8 mm camera port if you are using X or an XI. So two assistant ports, one for suction, the other for in the right leg fossa and I have a left sided 15 mm port where we also put a robotic port inside this port. So this is for use of stapling later on. Yeah, you are going for the video. So the radical cystectomy is all about spaces. Okay. So one this why we need the spaces. Space, spaces is required to define the pedicles. So the spaces in general consist of periureteral space, pre-rectal space, perivesical space, and antrivesical space. So first thing what we do is develop all the spaces so we uh, so that we define the pedicles of bladder so this is the right perioretal space this is developed after incision incising the peritoneum on the right ureter so make sure you get maintain adequate uh, perioretal blood supply It's not necessary to dissect all the way down to the bladder in case of robotic cystectomy as we do in open cystectomy because we don't need that much amount of length of ureter uh, for anastomosis in case of robotic surgery. So this much length of ureter is sufficient.
then we mobilize the sigmoid colon on the right left side so that's very important to develop the left perioretal sp perioretal space this is the left side so make sure that you keep sufficient uh, enough length of ureter along with perioretal blood supply once we do this we develop the perioretal space we join both the uh, period the incision in the cul-de-sac so the ureteral incision so this incision is given just about 1 to 2 cm above the uh, cul-de-sac so the difference between this and radical prostatectomy is we don't go into seminal vesicles. We go beneath the seminal vesicles. In the sense, uh, you will be posterior to seminal vesicles. No? Yes, posterior to seminal vesicles. So this is the denulvous fascia. This is the rectum and anterior is the prostate. This, this, this step is very crucial to develop the pedicles, to preserve the neurovascular bundle. Today, I'm, I'll be going to present about no sparing uh, robotic radical cystectomy. So, so we try to separate the neurovascular bundles posteriorly itself as much as possible along with development of uh, posterior pre-rectal space. Once this is done, we develop right perivesical space. This is just lateral to the medial umbilical ligament. We open the peritoneum. And go towards the pubic symphysis. And the aim is to see the liver trani muscle and the liver fascia and the prostatic fascia. You can see the liver trani muscle and the fascia, which is open. This gives the pedicle. So similarly, it is left perivesical space is also done by retracting the left medial umbilical ligament. Opening of the liver and fascia. Then the posterior pedicle, the vast difference is cut and coagulated and divided. There are three ways, two, three ways of doing this. One is we can use the ligature harmonic or thunderbeat to take care of these pedicles, or you can use an endo J stapler, or you can use a hemolog. So my preference is hemologs. Sometimes I use uh, endo J staplers. I don't have good experience with uh, use of ligature, thunderbeat, or an ultrasound. So here I'll be showing about uh, uh, endo GIA and hemologs. Preferably emolox when patient is sexually active and I am doing new bladders. If I am doing a conduit, I go with uh, stapless. So this is a 60 mm endo GI stapler. So you can see the pedicles are taken care with one go. This is the right side. This is the left side. So if you are planning a now sparing cystectomy, I, then I would go with hemolog clips. So this is the ves vascular superior vesicle artery. It's the medial umbilical ligament. You can note the ureter has not been cut still. So I don't cut the ureter until before, I cut the ureter just before dropping the blood. So all the posterior lateral pedicles are uh, divided. So the aim is to reach the seminal vesicle tip where you get the prostatic neurovascular bundle. You can see the seminal vesicle here. So minimal use of cautery.
So the neurovascular bundles have been separated. Still some prostatic pedicles are there. So it will be taken care by humeral clips. Now I'm opening the lateral pelvic fascia. This is called eye release. So to prepare, to preserve the neurovascular bundle, it's a lateral prostatic fascia. So the neurovascular bundles have been separated away from, swept away from the prostate. The prostate has been dissected off the neurovascular bundle. You can see the neurovascular bundle nicely. So I continue till the apex of the prostate. So it's been completely separated. Same thing is done on the left side. You can see the prostate medially, the bundles laterally. So once I dissect the prostatic pedicles, neurovascular bundle, then I cut the ureters. This is to prevent whatever the physiological damage can happen, which can happen with blocking the ureter as late as possible. I don't send for infrozen. So then the bladder is dropped. So there's a difference between bladder drop between prostatectomy and cystectomy. So in prostatectomy, we don't go till the muscle. Here we go till the muscle. We remove the fascia covering the muscle also. So that's an important thing when we are doing cystectomy. Yeah, so you can say I go till the muscle. So once we reach the prostate, we dissect the apex. So the rest of the attachment of neurovascular bundle on the left side, anterior has been separated. I cut the DVC cord. To get the maximum urethral length, as I'm planning to do new bladder in this case, So there will be some bleeding. So irrigation is sufficient. One should not suck when we are doing DBC. It bleeds more. So once the urethra has been dissected, so I see, take suture with uh, three zero running suture with three zero V lock. So to gain maximum urethral length, some, some amount of more dissection is performed. Intraurethral part of urethra, intra prostatic part of urethra is dissected out. Uretra is transected. So it's important to keep it, it's a closed system because urethral carcinoma, as we know, has tendency to seed. So cut the, uh, cut the catheter. 
urethra. So as I'm planning in your bladder, I'll be taking prostatic urethral biopsy for frozen. How much time it will take for frozen to come? Half an hour. So the specimen is bad. Important thing is always bad the specimen when you are doing radical cystectomy. So I'm not showing the lymphadenectomy part because everybody knows. So I'll be more concentrating on the diversion part. So I'll be showing one of the difficult lymphadenectomies which I had. So the, my template is I go till the aortic bifurcation. So if you don't go till the aortic bifurcation, it's difficult to bring the ureter from below the sigmoid descent. So if you do a good lymph node dissection, the ureter will automatically come below the sigmoid descent. So this is what I'm showing is the ureter being brought down from below the sigma mid-center. This is the common iliac vein which we can see. So there's a sigma mid This is the opposite uh, side, psoas, psoas muscle, and this is the ureter. So this is the final appearance after we do lymphadenectomy and ureter tra transposition. So once that is done, so I'm showing now the ileal conduit. So I take about 15 centimeter of uh, a sling and measure from the ilocecal junction. You could see that. So that's ilocecal junction. So about 15 to 20 centimeters. Bring an endo GI stapler. So we should be very careful. The endo GI stapler should be applied perpendicular to the mesentery. So make sure that you are perpendicular to the mesentery, perpendicular to the bowel, and it is fine. It comes from the left side, 15 mm trocar. So I take another endo GA. I don't take deep bite, I take a shallow bite so that the bowel has to come out. So about three centimeter. So now what I do is I take a stitch on the distal end of the ball. So where we are going to do an intro entrostum. So this is the conduit. So the ideal length of conduit I don't measure with the tape. What I do is I bring it to the anterior abdominal wall where our stoma will be located. So the assistant presses anterior abdominal wall. So this is my stoma. I take the proximal end of this ball to the sacral promontory where my ureteral anastomosis will be there. So that will be the length of my conduit. So sometimes you take 15 centimeter and it doesn't come to uh, the anterior abdominal walls. So this is the ideal, of the, what I feel is this is the ideal technique. Measure it from the anterior abdominal wall to the sacral promontory where you are doing the anastomosis, ureteral ideal anastomosis. So this is the length which I got. So another endo GI stapler, same similar principle perpendicular to the mid-centric, perpendicular to the ball. Make sure that you don't have anything else below. If the stapler is not uh, put deep enough and uh, fire a little away, later on mid-centric can be tackled because if you go too deep, yeah. uh, central mid-centric vessel can be hit. Uh, the, what is your opinion? I, I take laparoscopically Bubble plus another two, three, four centimeter. Yeah. So, uh, yes, yes, sir. I mean, uh, that can be done. Yeah. So what some people do is they don't go deep. So they do a shallow bite if required. They do harmonically or ligasho with ligasho. Yeah. They, that also uh, so the central pedicle major vessel falls uh, sometimes, rarely. Yeah. Small bowel has so much uh, blood supply, not a problem. Yeah. yeah. So once this is done, so I follow the technique by USC. So where they, uh, by uh, University of Southern California, Dr. Gill and Dr. Mir Desai technique, where they discard three to five centimeter of bowel in case of ideal conduit. So this is because they want to separate the conduit from the bowel anastomosis. And this gives an added uh, mobility for the conduit to come up, sacrificing this three to five centimeters of bowel proximal to the conduit. After after you divide, you sacrifice, sir. Yeah, yeah proximally. No, not this, not the conduit. This is the ileum proximal to the conduit. Why? 
so it keeps the urinary tract away from the enteric enteric tracts so if, if both both of them are almost anastomosis what we do urethroidal anastomosis and the ball anastomosis is almost adjacent to each other if you do this this will be slightly far away from the urethroidal anastomosis another thing is gives an extra mobility for our conduit to come up outside the anterior abdominal wall that's it take that's the principle principle is good but looks unfair a little bit <laughs> <laughs> so it's ilm it works out so another stitch is taken for ball which we are doing in intra intraostomy i put a small uh, uh, mark for the distal end of conduit which is going to come out of the uh, anterior abdominal wall and keep it just like that so now the intra intraostomy is done side to side does anybody recommend vicral and catgut for the proximal and distal end so that you need not you will not confuse that's a disaster if you do something wrong here i think you can i mean initially you can do if you keep on doing it i think you will get used to it yeah yeah at the moment i am using vicral and catgut okay. uh, catgut for uh, part to be retained in the body mm. and vicral for the part to be brought out okay so so the introstomy introtomy is done this is the distal segment yeah this is the, this is the proximal segment the assistant is very crucial in this procedure so different types of staplers are available so i i personally would prefer motri stapler but it's expensive what we are using is this endo gia tri stapler technology by covid but you require good assistant you are entering these two and making parallel is really difficult unless yes. assistant and stay stitches are not taken Yes, yeah. and yes, and and the stapler also should come in proper direction from the absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Assist, assistant, assistant, assistant is threading, threading properly. Yes, yes. Otherwise, it will be assistant should be still. Assistant should be still. We should be doing all the work. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Whoever. Uh, so, uh, make sure that the mesentery is not down, so it's not there. So you're not taken the mesentery. Excellent. So this part laparoscopically is little difficult because even if you take stay stitches, then only it happen. Yeah. Stay stitches in the in the distal part, I mean to say. So another sixty load I take because the proximal butt end is sacrificed. Yeah, you put another one. Yeah, it becomes wide anastomosis. Oh so my because, god. Oh, this is first time I'm seeing. No, that's it. I mean, most of them do this only, sir. Oh, so the anastomosis is wide, so it might leak, but there will be no obstruction. <laughs> so make sure that there is no thread or any sutures when you are firing the firing the when you are closing the center atom. So this is the opening which is which is closed. you always need an two staplers for this see, i mean you feel, uh, also see that the zero size there on both the sides yeah. but this is a point i learned that you fire two times in the lumen is it yeah there also two staplers because i mean that's it that, that doesn't fire completely see the length of the anastomosis is quite sufficient very nice very nice but uh, So the proximal end of the conduit, ideal conduit, where you have stapler, I don't open it and sew it. I underrun it. Generally, most of the people do this. No, they open and they. I mean, some people just leave like that. Some people open and close it with the uh, suture. I just underrun it. Yeah, I also Theoret theoretical risk of stone formation, so that's the reason. So one can use an ICG and see the vascularity. I get sometimes I don't give ICG. Sometimes, especially in radiation induced uh, cystectomies and all, so we use it. So three cc of ICG is given to see the vascularity of the conduit, the anastomosis, the vascularity of the ureters. So the conduit looks good. The ureter looks good.
So I will be showing both the technique, brickers and wallers. So my preferred technique is bricker. I use wallers only in case of uh, uh, difficult irritants like radiation, uh, salvage cystectomies, all those things. So my preferred switcher is 4-0 Y-Krill on a cutting needle. You are doing side to side? No, uh, yeah, side to side. Yeah, I also do. This is very, very useful, I say, because yeah. it's like pyloplastic. Yes, absolutely. Really so useful. Everything is, says, see, I'm not touching the mucosa of the ureter. Yeah, yeah. Which technique is widely spatulated, funnel anastomosis, and I play system. At the end, uh, you leave it the ureter or you just cut it and suture? Uh, I didn't get uh, What's the question? At the, at the end, uh, end of the ureter? End of the ureter, I'm going to cut it off. It's not required. Okay. In open technique, in open, te in open surgery, you need this because you will be suturing in the anteroabdominal wall. Most of the time, you sa sacrifice. Exactly. Exactly. I also do laparoscopically. Very, very useful this is. Makes life very, very easy. So, and also this ureter was very dilated. It made my life easier. Yeah. Very nicely done. So, next step is to put a stent. So, I usually use double J or a single J stent. Sometimes double J sing or sometimes single J. Double J, most of the time it falls off on its own. Why you are not using ureter, the suction cannula directly or parting? I'm not used to this. Uh, what section? Uh, so that section. It will, push. will go directly into your ureter and you can push. Yeah, this robotically can, I think, it's not yeah. right. This is also sometimes for beginners, it is a difficult job. Yeah. So the anterior uh, anastomosis, layer of anastomosis come done. So always make sure that you are not catching the ureteric mucosa. Use the periuretric tissues also. It gives sufficient strength to the anastomosis. This strength, how many uh, uh, Tiwari Madhu Tiwari is asking how many how many uh, days you keep? Two weeks? Three weeks? Stents? Ah. Stents three to four weeks. Double just stents, they fall on their own. They come out of the conduit sometimes. No need to remove also. <laughs> So this is the left side completed. Similarly, right side is being done. So I've just done the posterior layer. So right side ureter is length will be slightly lesser compared to the left. So this is the completion. The drain is placed. So the, the pre-marked uh, stoma site incision is given, st standard technique. So it's enlarged. Finger is placed, two fingers sh should accommodate. The back box is taken and the conduit is grabbed and bought out. So I'll be next showing the Wallace technique. So this I use. You the rectus sheet or only muscle? Rectus sheet. Rectus sheet and through the rectus sheet. Yeah. Muscle is slip, split. Split. So this is this this is a patient who had radiation post radiation. Uh, Hello. So for him I used the Wallace technique. I reserve it for only. Post radiation setting because the chance of stricture are more with breakers. So, okay. 
So this is the creation of Wallace plate. What technique do you use, sir? Uh, I never use Wallace. I am very much afraid. Pricker only because uh, laparoscopically I am very much comfortable both the sides. If any problem arises for a, a one thing, uh, I, I really am afraid of this uh, uh, technique Wallace. Okay. <laughs> really afraid. So the stents are placed through the conduit and placed in the respective ureters. A lot of uh, seniors uh, uh, like uh, Mihir and everybody suggest this. Uh, yeah. If any any stenosis happens, uh, both kidneys will be at risk uh, because one of the anastomotic anastomotic stenosis is very common complication in radical cystectomy after five years. So this is this is the technique which has been developed by uh, Dr. Peter Wickland from when he was in Karolinska. So he takes stratafix, two stratafix. I don't take stratafix. I take two monopil four zero tight. Uh, 15 centimeter tight together. The video is not playing. Yeah, I have paused it tight together. Okay. So, okay. Nowadays, Stratafix is uh, becoming popular. What is your opinion in which conditions you are using? So, we are not getting VLOG that's why we are using Stratafix. Stratafix is uh, very good, thin, but it, uh, it acts like a saw sometimes. So, I don't use do much. Think that, uh, do you think that Rokar stitch it will be useful? Yeah, I, I'm showing the case what I'm doing with this uh, Roka stitch. I use Stratafix itself. So I just show. So this is the two arm stitch. So the this is parachute. The intestine is parachute to the uh, ureters. It, it saves a lot of time. This is, not, uh, this is not barbed. It's not barbed. This is uh, 4 0 monocryl. Uh, this is 40 men of monocryl. Okay. Monocryl. Stratafix is barbed, no? Barbed, yeah. It has small barb compared to uh, VLOC. VLOC. Yeah. But generally, people say narrow, narrow uh, lumens should not be sutured with uh, uh, the VLOC or uh, Stratafix, barbed sutures. But uh, ureter, ureter oil and anastomosis is difficult, easy to finish it off. So it's anyway time consuming procedure. So people are doing with Stratafix. So this anastomosis is completed. This is a difficult part. If you miss this, it will make me leak. Yeah. So so that's done. So nowadays we have Da Vinci uh, stapler called Sureform stapler. They have come with their own stapler. It's called Sureform uh, stapler. It comes as 45, 60, 100. So 60 is the commonly used one. So it's similar to the convention into GIA or motorized staplers, but we have your own autonomy. We, have, we don't require an assistant to do it. But uh, Da Vinci also will be associated with certain companies, certain cameras. Certain, no, uh, they have this is, they have their own stapler. They had a litigation which was, uh, I mean, uh, was washed in two thousand eighteen or nineteen. So I think it, 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 uh, Johnson Johnson had filed it. So now they have their own staplers. So it's similar to their uh, into, I mean COVID and ethicon staplers. So now I'll be showing about the uh, new bladder. This is what I do is Karolinska modified student neobladder. Usually, uh, the uh, uh, BMG asked how to remove the stents. I think generally I remove with nephroscope. No, I, I, I keep a uh, usually keep a single J stents. So the J stents come out of the stoma. So I just pull it out. So if I put a double J, I uh, do a scopy and remove it. Yeah, scopy is not difficult with nephroscopy. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is uh, uh, a new bladder. So first step in new bladder is uh, taking this roco stitch, so-called roco stitch. So what I take is uh, denominous fascia cartilage of peritoneum, this cell and and the rhabdosphincter muscle below the urethra. So what it does is it not only gives hemostasis, it pulls the urethra in inside the abdomen. 
ya yeah, ya yeah. and also gives stability for the bladder fluid have you ever thought of that uh, the needle goes through rectum and if you pull and damage the rectum initially i i mean initially i worried but it's very thick you have this denoise fascia yeah. which is very thick yeah yeah i think it's and anyway it's non absorbable stitch you take a wall of rectum nothing is going to happen so this is the denoise fascia this is the cartilage of peritoneum so this same this is the kerlinska uh, new bladder so when they take 60 mm of 60 cm of bowel so 20 cm uh, distally and 40 cm proximally and the uh, 40 cm is detubularized and 10 cm is left as a chimney so th the important step is to bring the bladder i mean to bowel to the urethra so the with the same stitch which i took i take a stitch on the posterior wall of the uh, intestine and the rhabdo sphincter and try to pull the bowel towards the urethra this you do before opening the bowel yeah this is done before opening the bowel the anastomosis all these things are done before opening the bowel this is uh, you are taking urethral lumen or outside again no 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 this is outside the urethra the rhabdo sphincter not rhabdo sphincter it is rectal urethralis so now i make a open in the bowel this is for the this is the for neo urethra so now take double arm stratafix i'm doing this with stratafix stratafix is better in this scenario compared to vlock i think what is a needle size 20 or 30 this is 40 two big needle and curve yeah 40 Yeah, for sure. Do you know rough cost of this? I have no idea. <laughs> so all those who work in carpets don't worry about the cost. So I think it must be around four or five thousand. Four or five thousand. So available freely in India, na? Yeah, yeah, it's available. So the three stitches which are available, one is Stratafix. Stratafix, uh, Vlock, and Quill. Oh. So this the this anastomosis is completed. Nice. And this foley catheter you put anywhere. This this limb or that limb doesn't. Uh, no, I need to make it. I need to polarize it. Right. Yeah, so to polarize it. While to polarizing here, you have to be more closer to the nasal entry. Yes. Yes. This is the difficult part of the. new bladder to bring the uh, intestine to the urethra so there are many techniques been described if it doesn't come down we can decrease the pneumo peritoneum we can decrease the tender bowel we can put loops between the mesentery and uh, pull the intestine or even, we can make uh, cuts the peritoneum 40 cm when you cut also it won't come easily no no why no. because of mesentery mesentery thick mesentery you can you can in, make an incision over the peritoneum of the mesentery also so many techniques are there to bring it down so in this patient it went in easy the anastomosis is done presently radical prostatectomy uh, 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 the uh, uro needle you are using or this type of needle you are using Same similar needle. So we use for radical prostatectomy V lock three zero. Not euro one needle. Previously, everybody used to do five by eight circle. No sir. No. So now the difference in stapling in ideal conduit is different from new bladder. So about twenty centimeter for proximal to the ideal cecal junction and about twenty centimeter of. From the urethra, a shallow bite is taken. We don't need not have to go deep here. So twenty uh, centimeter, twenty, 
another 20. So another shallow bite at, at 40 centimeters. The ball continuation is restored, similar to the way we did the conduit. The ball is deep detubularized starting from the distal segment. So suction can be placed, it will be easier. Most of times it will take four, five hours. So cystectomy takes about uh, one and a half hours, lymph node takes about properly, properly done 45 minutes to one hour. This takes about three hours. Mm -hmm. Lot of suturing is involved. For that suturing again, V lock or strata? V lock or strata fix anything. anything. So 10 centimeter of chimney is left and rest of the 30 centimeters is due to progress on this side also. Better always measure or pro uh, approximation? No, I, I measured initially. So 10 to 12 centimeters is sufficient. Many people don't do chimney nowadays. So it's, it's, there are so many ways of doing this new bladder. So this is one of the techniques. So it's asymmetric, asymmetrical posterior. Recently so, okay. in uh, Jodhpur Ames, uh, Dr. Your mentor also, Dr. I was, there, I was there with him. You were, you yeah. were there with him. Same procedure he did, no? Yeah, yeah same. I was watching closely. So this is asymmetrical posterior. So this asymmetry helps in making this conduit circular. I mean, in the end. So we place a lot of stay suture so that the suturing becomes easier. This is on zero zone. Yeah. This is our stay switches. Yeah, yeah. So that uh, disparity is un unlikely. Yeah. So this is the VLO. So zero muscular switches are taken. The posterior plate is constructed. Now the bowel is folded. Once this is done, so it is folded. So it's two folding.
so the capacity of a student in your bladder is somewhere between 300 to 350 ml by mod, by carolins this by this technique yeah. so there are various other new bladders like w or uh, some people uh, uh, usc has their own modification so all the new bladders in the end they are almost of the same capacity This part will take around three hours, sir. Huh? Lot of suturing. Yeah. So, and and it's this done meticulously, not jumping bites. The urethral part is done. Get the tris placed. Yeah. So opening is left proximally. There is another opening there. So this will close in the end. So now the ureteroilia anastomosis part is left. So the proximal chimney, the sutures, the staples are cut. It's the erectus, the erectus. The volus plate has been done. So it's similar to the technique which I had shown. So I place my needle holder through the chimney so that I can bring the stents through the chimney. and place in the ureter. This anastomosis, what I do is wallace, so it takes less time. All the suturing, while watching this, can we have questions? Simple questions, yeah, 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 yeah. because anyway, it is uh, uh, now understood. Uh, the commonest post-operative complication apart from paralytic ileus on fifth, day, fifth to seventh day, uh, if the leak happens, how do you evaluate? I mean, this is a theory question, which is practical, whatever the approach is like CT scan, whether it is the ureter uh, or the uh, ileum or the how you will assess. So it's usually at the ureter ileal anastomosis. So yeah. do a CT program, CT. Contrasity. If commonly, if patient has post-op ileus, the common cause is 
urinely. That's what I feel. If ball is all right, I mean, your anastomosis. No, after the staplers, I have also used bowel stapler is more safer than. Uh, I, feel, yeah. I feel very safe. If properly. So it's 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 most probably most commonly it's due to urine leak. So if there is urine leak, uh, we have a drain. Most of the urine stops. If it doesn't stop, then we have to put PCN. So wait, then you will go into stricture, then you'll have to put stents, all those things. That, that's the usual procedure. Yeah. So I put an SPC also. So I feel the most common thing is infections. Uh, so infection is one thing which... Infection keeps on happening. And they, they're prone for recurrent pyelonephritis. So, so that one thing, especially with new bladders. So let's check leak proof is done. Good capacity. Very nice. Brain is placed. One drain? Sir? Only one drain? Yeah, only one drain. So in general, I remove drain when patient has passed flatus and is tolerating oral diet and if drain. Output is less than 500 ml if drain fluid creatinine is normal. Even if it is less than 500, I mean, when it is 400, 500, I remove it off. Because it is large surface area, it gets absorbed. If it is. In all uh, radical cystectomy, prostectomy, these small lymph less than 200, lot of people, oncology, oncosurgeons, 200, 300, they take it easily and take it off. Yeah. I get a drain fluid creatinine and get it off. So now I'm showing some challenging cases. This is one case where patient had a bulky pelvic lymphadenopathy. So we, we usually start dissection just lateral to the iliac vessels. So between the psoas muscle, iliac vessel and go and see the obturator now lateral. What is your lateral limit? You will go laterally genitofemoral branch or medial, medial to <clears throat> Lateral limit is the genitofemoral now. So, proximal it is bifurcation, distally it is uh, deep circumflex vein or node of Do right side, left side proximal up to bifurcation. Sigmoid yeah. colon has to be mobilized a lot. With these ports, can you mobilize easily sigmoid yeah, colon? Yeah, yeah, it's not a problem. So, you can see it's a bulky node there. Yeah. Very bulky node, fixed. It's fixed to the operator now. So, in general, I don't take. But, I mean, for despite of being picked up in the CT and no. new treatment, do you have any role? Patient had a dose dense MVAC. In spite of that, PET CT didn't show any of these things. It was not FDJ. So if it is if it is so bulky, don't do it actually robotically. Yeah. Do you believe in new adjoint in large lymph nodes nowadays? No, I, I, I give we give new adjoint for all. But, uh, muscle invasive bladder cancer. If the GFR is all right and they are cisplatin eligible. Even with, the, with respect to the lymph node size? Yes. Or... Even if there is no lymph node also, we give it. All muscle invasive bladder cancer, GFR more than 50. If they are cisplatin eligible, we give uh, new joint chemotherapy. Does it make any difference in the dissection? No, no difference, but uh, they have most of the time who, who respond will have an, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, T0 disease. So there will be no disease most of the time. So it's a good prognosis if they don't have any disease after your joint chemotherapy and we do radical cystectomy. If there is a disease after radical cystectomy, radical with, radiotherapy, that much reaction will not be there in chemotherapy. No, no, no. no, no. This patient had chemotherapy. Okay. So all, all, all patients which I showed till now, all are 
post neurogen chemotherapy again it's almost all patients you mean to say yes yes if, if so they are as, they, as, if as they, you are saying i mean that yes. is latest anyway neurogen chemotherapy has got major major role yeah. so this part of lymph node was difficult to dissect in your hospital now aster who is your assistant sorry to ask so my assistant is my dmb colleague dmb colleague from medanta yes john okay right is dr akbar so he has some experience with robotic surgery also and for them a little bit uh, uh, taxing to sit for a long time and doing all this na yeah yes. the first surgeon himself is taxing so some places they do cystectomy one surgeon conduit is done by another surgeon two two team surgery so definitely if you have three surgeons it uh, yeah definitely improve the performance so it's still attached to the yeah big one yeah do you dissect all branches of internal iliac vessels uh, and remove all that anterior to that internal iliac vessels we cut it off so uh, this i showed it so medial umbilical ligament is, is cut off so oh, that's okay yeah so branches I just, are, I I mean, ra radical cystectomy nahi no? radical prostatectomy i am asking no no so the lymphadenectomy when you are doing you will dissect all the branches and anterior lymphatic oh. sac you remove No, no. I just remove the operator packet and extra ile packet. That's it. So I I'm not aggressive in uh, prostate when when doing lymphadenectomy. I'm very aggressive in bladder. So lymphadenectomy in prostate now is a little bit controversial. So I follow the nomogram, the Ganti nomogram. So if if the chance of lymph node involvement is less more than seven percent on the nomogram, then only I go for lymphadenectomy. So otherwise we don't do it. Now this is you skip it in late. This is no use. Like that yeah. it is now. Yes, yes. So I'm trying to find out operator now here. So this is the Mercier triangle, Mercier yeah. triangle. Yeah, this is big, big chunk. Yeah. So. Can see the external uh, internal iliac vein there. I'll stop trader now. It's almost attached to it.
have you ever encountered external like vein injury yeah as you said it mm. see it to suture it. yeah most of the times it will be collapsed so much yeah in a, even i have ibc with pneumoperitoneum if we can suture so if it is small i think artery is more difficult in trendelberg position deep tendon blood vein will be so much collapsed yes as if yeah. no blood in the vein new peritoneum is also there yeah so it's separated from the no. a lot of discussion on these type of patients morbidity and mortality yeah he didn't have any other chance i mean this is the only chance he had so he got limp, uh, uh new chemotherapy chemotherapy did after chemotherapy this was the response no i have seen after radical cystectomy with lymph nodes exactly yeah, they, one one and a half year they, they will come know. with uh, they will come with uh, recurrence so this patient right. also had uh, we gave him localized rt so i think it's been about 6 months uh, yeah chemo rt gemcitabine and uh, radiation therapy to the four sinus pelvic lymph nodes so this is another case where there is tumor in the bladder diverticulum this is the left side diverticulum so right So the problem is space constraint. So we don't have enough space when when you are doing this kind of procedure. So do you always do valves in your bladders? Has to be yeah yeah yeah. I do always valves because uh, I. because of time so if i do recurs it will be too anastomosis so it will be almost 5 5 hours so easier to do but in conduit i use bricker i do bricker so this is, this is the tumor bladder uh, tumor in the diverticulum being separated off the pedicles so last is salvage radical cystectomy this patient had uh, a radical prostatectomy about 10 years back then he had a biochemical recurrence for which we had, he had radiation post radiation he had hematuria and then had developed bladder cancer everything was stuck finding that ureter was difficult so the message is we can still do robotic uh, cystectomy in this patients also the most important thing is if you have a plane between the rectum and the bladder anything is possible
So these are the results till now. I've done about 38 uh, radical cystectomy with ileal conduit intracorporeal and 11 new bladders. So I've not done any female new bladders. So I had a bad experience with female new bladder. Where I had an extra corporeal lobotic cystectomy with extra corporeal. And one patient had an hypercontinence, other patient developed fistula. The uh, new bladder and vaginal fistula. The hypercontinence patient I had to convert to a conduit. So I'm a little skeptical and not attempted female new bladder. You know. uh, the mean age of surgery, as you can see, is less in case of uh, new bladder compared to uh, conduit. BMI is less in uh, new bladder. GFR is obviously more uh, in new bladders. The complications are pretty similar. So uh, this is this is uh, I mean 38 and 11 11 new bladders are quite less, but uh, I mean we do do not get enough number of cases, and most of the patients are not complained in our country. They, they come from poor socioeconomic status, not willing for CIC. So it's difficult to convince them for a new blood. And with that, I would like to in my presentation. Thank you. Great. So highly appreciated. Very good video. Very well edited videos. Put a lot of effort for this. And uh, people might see this again and again. Total 100 have seen the video. Uh, in robotic surgery, less than 20, 30 only will see. So <laughs> I okay. must say it's good. 100 is a big number. Nowadays, every day webinar. Every day, two are also happening. We are continuing pure love last uh, two years now. So we are making uh, monthly six like that uh, with different surgeons. Definitely, it is interesting. A lot, many people might have not seen this. Uh, recently, only I have seen along with you with uh, Rajesh Alwar, sir. Anyway, that's great. And uh, these type of surgery are most advanced surgeries in urology. Once you master this, that's probably the... Uh, high achievement and I hope you will continue this with your Rabo and uh, with your experience in multiple uh, international centers. All the best and we will look forward for even some partial nephrectomies if you are doing very good case and uh, come back after six months like that again as speaker. Okay. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Sir. you. Thank, uh, you. Thank, uh, thank you. Thank you. Sir. Uh, do you do cystogram after neobladder is one question. How long do you keep catheter is another question last please for the audience. No cystogram. I leave catheter for three weeks. Okay. I remove catheter, I do cystoscopy at the same time, remove the stents. Great. Thank you. Nice. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. Thank very you. Great. Thank you.